Hello, ladles and jelly spoons. I'm Dave Rubin. This is the Rubin Report, and you're watching on YouTube, so we got to get to it quick. I've got Aaron Foley, I've got Fred Carter, and I've got Kelly Carlin, and we are starting off with clearly the most important story of the year, the Oscars. <laughs> Let's get to it. General feelings to start. Aaron, what do you think? Oh, it's the best show I think I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, wow. I have it on tape. I've watched it four times today. Uh, no, I thought, it was a, I thought it was a stink bomb. Uh, good thing I was drunk. Um, now, there was, a, there was a couple ones. Uh, I thought Seth maybe... I thought one every 25 jokes worked. And then at the very end, he's like, thanks for staying. It's been the longest show ever. Then I'm going to do another number because uh, the show was about him. Uh, All right, so yeah. chalk Aaron Foley up as unimpressed. Fred Carter, what did you think? I have to agree, and I love the Oscars. I used to go to the Oscars, and I've it's an important I've seen many pictures night. of you holding Oscars <laughs> with, with, with stars. You're, you're always holding them very tight, and the Oscar in another hand. I used to crash the Oscar, ended up on stage a couple years, but it was a different era. They had better shows. Last night's, I think they were trying to are. They're making a big effort for this younger demographic, which I guess they got, according to the... Uh, Nielsen's today, but I think they really missed the boat, and Seth should uh, should continue writing. And I think let's get Billy Crystal or Eddie Murphy or a couple a comedian who can respond to the what's happening at the show that was missing. Yeah, because when you want young people, Billy Crystal is <laughs> what comes to mind. Yes. Kelly Carlin, what did you think? Or Shirley Bassey and Barbara Streisand. <laughs> uh, I'm so confused about what the cast of Chicago has to do with anything. I'm I, I'm just dumbfounded. Every time they'd show up, I'm like, what? They're here again? What's going on? <laughs> I, I was confused the whole time. Yeah. I just kept writing on Twitter, confused. I'm confused again. What's going on? It they, seemed it seemed like a big mis mishmash of yeah. stuff. Just yeah. a lot of Kristen stuff. Kristen Stewart was definitely confused. Uh, <laughs> I didn't watch the red carpet, and I don't know, uh, I'm not on my Kristen Stewart uh, Twitter feed every two seconds, so I had no idea she cut her foot. The first time you see her, she's she's hobbling out. She's like a bruised she, arm. Her hair's all like, I was like, what? Did, did she just bang a cameraman right before she went on stage? Like, what is happening? She looked like a hot mess. Yeah. Is it harder for a woman, you think, because we're so focused, you know, on the, oh, yeah. the looks for the women. The guys can come out in all these ridiculous beards and their yep. hair is all mess. The women have to look so perfect. Yeah, they're either too... Or the snark. You're either too skinny or you're too fat <laughs> yeah. in this town. And there's a lot of skinny girls out there. And so a lot of things was, you know, feed this girl, feed this girl. I, I can't even imagine. It's, it's impossible uh, standards. Yeah. You're screwed. Yeah. Uh, Either way, I just I just wanted her to like walk properly and not look completely blazing high. You yeah, know? I mean it's I, I like got a high bar for her. I Have just... we confirmed that she wasn't high? Because I didn't realize the ankle thing either, and she looked like she had just done drugs, stumbled yeah. out, and yeah. and then she just fumbled been. through the thing. She could have been on painkillers. I mean I don't know. I, I, yeah. I my favorite moment was when Jennifer Lawrence tripped. I just that thought was <laughs> <sweet>. <laughs> I just that was like awesome. yes, real moment. Thank you. Yeah, and she handled herself so well. She was, she was like joking around, yeah. and yeah, she was awesome. She's cool. What do you guys? think of the idea that the host can sort of never win because it pretty much exactly what you all said that you know no matter how good he is you're gonna get the snark on Twitter of course and people are gonna go crazy now you're the non comedian at the table so as a regular citizen which is how we refer <laughs> to non comedians <laughs> regular. yes as a regular citizen of the United States what, what do you think for the host is it is it an unwinnable proposition basically but I think they had the biggest loser last night in Seth, and, and I don't mean to criticize him just for that, but, but it, was, it was poorly done on his part, and the writing was terrible. Where was Bruce Falange? Where were those jokes? When, when there was a trip on stage, you're supposed to come and respond to that trip. There was not one mention of anything that happened in the show. It was all scripted. I think Seth MacFarlane could have just taped that thing a week ago and, and phoned it in, and that was missing. Yeah. I think they need to get the Pixar writers, because the Pixar writers have a way of writing jokes for like the, the grown-ups in a theater and at the same time the kids. Yeah. And it's the same thing with the Oscars. You have to please the insider Hollywood crowd, and you have to please 10 billion people uh, watching th th yeah. around the yeah. world. Yeah. So uh, there's, I know it can be done, and it has some years, but... And, I, and Seth MacFarlane, very funny, extremely talented human being. Insanely it talented, It just yeah. wasn't yeah. funny. I wasn't Except laughing. For the sock puppets. Sock puppets were Best great. Moment People ever. love the sock they were, puppets. <laughs> he's so, he is, 
<laughs> Guaranteed, like super talented, super funny. I just thought some of it, it is, it's about pleasing the masses. And he just, it was so specific of just like snarkville and pushing the envelope. And it, that doesn't really work for Oscars. You have yeah. to please like my parents. And you gotta be a little know? classy too. Yeah, yeah. well, speaking of yeah. classy and this constant need to please, do you think there's something weird about how when they do something a little edgy, if you can call a Lincoln joke about being assassinated 150 <laughs> years ago, edgy, but it's somehow that the, these elite liberals are, seem to be the most offended people, even though they're supposed to have the best sense of humor. What's the deal with that, you Republican? I was curious, along the Lincoln uh, assassination lines, everybody who was sitting in the boxes seemed to win. Did you notice that? <laughs> so I don't know, I think next year you're gonna have people you know, insisting, celebrities nominated are gonna be insisting they sit in one of those boxes or they're not coming to the I show. I never saw anyone sit in a balcony before this year. No, was that, yeah, a, was no. that a nod to Lincoln? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> it, it might have been, it yeah. might have been. Uh, yes. All right, well let's move on because the, uh, the big fallout after the Oscars, you, you don't think the Oscars are gonna happen and then someone's not gonna get in trouble on, uh, on the Twitter, do you? Uh, the <laughs> Onion <laughs> tweeted about, uh, uh, I got to get her name right, Quavenjene Wallace. Uh, she was in Beasts of the Southern Wild, and she's the nine-year-old actress. And uh, well, let's put up the uh, the tweet at the Onion. Everyone else seems afraid to say it, but that Quavenjene Wallace is kind of a c-word, right? Okay, there it is. <laughs> Thank God for my phonetics, um, we're, Kelly. I'm going to start with you on this one because. Thank God. <laughs> Uh, language, comedy, these are things you're very interested in. Your father, George Carlin, is the godfather of both of those things. Of the C word. And of, of, the C, <laughs> of all of those seven or 50 filthy words. The list keeps getting bigger, it's very actually. Long, very long. Which he would be very upset by. Where should we start with this? Take it away. Well, uh, first of all, when I saw this today, I thought, this is. This is the living room joke. This isn't the Twitter joke. This is the joke that someone comes up with it in the living room who's very high, who's been doing bong hits all night long and probably a few shots. And they turn around and it's one of my more irreverent comedian friends and they say it and we all laugh because we all know it's not true. It's not what it's about. It's about Hollywood. It's about, you know, people are impossible and clearly this girl's not impossible, but this is not something you tweet. No. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, and I, and I just, it would have been okay if Gilbert Gottfried had tweeted it because then he would have apologized right away and everything would have been okay. Yeah, he might have apologized before. He might have. And then after again. Yeah. Uh, now this, and then today people are like bringing my dad's name up with this and then of course they ask me what would he think and I don't know, he's dead. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> um, I, you know, it, it's, I don't know. I, these days, I just don't know anymore about jokes. I, it's all, it's either too PC or yeah. we're too, uh, I, yeah. whew, that's exactly. what I have to yeah. say. You ran out of words yeah. because did. you didn't want to offend anybody. I Fred, can't. Fred what, do you, what do you think about this? You know, it's, um, it's a, a reference to child stars and many of us have worked with them, um, but it very obviously very inappropriate. I think there should be a moratorium on using the C word on anyone who was born this millennium. And she was born in 2003. Yeah. I think if you go the 90s and before, so it's anyone, okay. 90s, prior to that. I think so. C word, okay. So this is an age issue, basically, which well, you seem to be for a lot of, of people. Of course, yes. sure, because yeah. it's uh, right. a nine-year-old girl. Because look, girl. If, if, the, uh, if everything being equal, if this had been said about Ann Coulter, I'm pretty sure that an, that an apology would have not have been issued. I would have been like, she like, like, Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> like, retweet, retweet, retweet. <laughs> All right. Retweet, retweet. <laughs> You can only retweet once. So I'm pretty. I would, I would have kept retweeting. You would have started other Twitter accounts. I would have been like fake Aaron Foley. Retweet. <laughs> fake Aaron Foley too. Retweet. All right, well, Aaron Foley. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even call her the. C I would never. I, I mean, that's what it is. It's like. You know, you gotta have maybe like a some Twitter filter, like a draft, or like yeah, you high five your buddy, and then you go, duh. But I'm, you know, not a complete Awkward. idiot. Right. You know, now, it's now. it's so outrageous that, which which is alarming too, because the Onion. I mean, who doesn't love the Onion? They've like the smartest. Like they don't need to do any of that. Like right. they're so above that, and but, they're interesting but and smart. I was tweeting like crazy last night, and it's a snark fest, and it's what you do during these live <laughs> events. And yeah. you know, and I always feel dirty afterwards because I know I've said a few things that I wouldn't normally say. And but I felt like like I'd been on a cocaine binge yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking possibly this person just kind of didn't really realize how out of bounds it was. Yeah. 
and it went out there, and this person has been fired from The Onion now, which is weird. Well, speaking of being fired, so of course The Onion did issue an apology because this is America in 2013 and everyone has to apologize for something. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the apology itself. Dear readers, on behalf of The Onion, I offer my personal apology uh, to Qua... Qua <laughs> Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> Wallace and the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences for, for the tweet that was circulated last night during the Oscars. It was crude and offensive, not to mention inconsistent with The Onion's commitment to parody and satire, however biting. No person should ever be subjected to, to such a, shame, a senseless, humorless comment masquerading as satire. The tweet was taken down within an hour of publication. We have instituted new and tighter Twitter <laughs> procedures to ensure that this kind of mistake does not occur again, et cetera, et cetera. And this is from The Onion CEO, Steve Hanna. The interesting word here that I think we should focus on is the word mistake. Mm -hmm. Because if had the reaction been different, well, no one would have thought this was a mistake. And that's the fine line that comedians have to play on. How, how do yeah. you deal with that? When you're, when you're writing jokes and you're on stage, how do you deal with that? Um, well, I don't use the C, C word. Uh, I kind of reel that in. Yeah. So many times where I'm like, that would be the best punchline. <laughs> and then I'm like, no, I got to rewrite that so I can still have a career. Uh, but yeah, I mean, honest to God, I think it, it, it went too far. They apologized. For, in my book, I'm like, the guy, I don't, the guy or woman, I'm assuming it's a guy, yeah. doesn't need to be fired. It, yeah. It's so ridiculous. Like, all right, it was a bad call. You take it down, you apologize, you move on. Like, the fact that it's still going on, oh, the, you know, just wrap it up. Isn't you know what I mean? Isn't that funny, though? We're all assuming that it's a man, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Although, what if it was a woman? It because it could have been, because, you know, women have opinions yeah. about other women, yeah. and especially women who are, you know, considered bitchy and the C yeah. word, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, but uh, one thing I know that my dad did say about this is that the comedian's job is to find the edge and cross it. That is their job. Yeah. And they did That's find an edge and they, and they crossed it last night. Okay, great. Now we know where that edge is. But then again, Going after a nine-year-old child, yeah. uh, that's, an, that's an edge that I'm not quite sure also, you even you want to have, approach. You could have like maybe throw, like, bitchy. <laughs> I don't know, like, uh, like you know, pain, naughty, pain, yeah. like, there, there's, you know, yeah. that you could have tried the joke in another way yeah. as well. See, I think he's you gonna know? have to apologize for that letter. He said tighter Twitter in there controls and tighter. <laughs> Tighter, didn't he say that? That, that sounds, Steve? It sounds like it something sounds, that you might have to apologize. I think he's going to so. have to apologize for that beautiful yeah. letter of apology. Uh, <laughs> apologizing for apologies. That's, that's actually what's coming up next. All right, let's <laughs> get off the Oscars for just a second. If we can move on to something slightly more serious. America's crumbling. Uh, <laughs> The sequester, have you guys heard about this thing? Basically some budget cuts are gonna kick, are gonna kick in. I'm, I'm not gonna give you every little breakdown about it because uh, go somewhere else and find the serious stuff. But basically some budget cuts are kicking in about $85 uh, billion dollars, and the Republicans are saying uh, it's gonna gut the military. Democrats are saying we gotta raise taxes to take care of it. It's the same old, same old fight that we're always in. My question to you guys is, is this just simply how politics now works, that we just get to crisis mode and then some sort of half-assed rev resolution? Fred, what do you think? Well, I came up with the adage about uh, 10 years ago that all politics is selfish. And it's based on what Tip O'Neill said when he was Speaker of the House, which was all politics is local. And that's what it is now. You have 535 members of the House and Senate who all they care about is the next election, period. And they're not getting along, they're not doing the kinds of things they need to do to solve the country's crisis. I'm all for this sequester, the budget cuts. Let's give it a try. I think government will adjust. They're doing all the scare tactics now that we've always heard in government doing. They did that in California when, with Proposition 13. I just think that we should try it and see what happens. Yeah. Aaron, what do you think? Uh, can we deal with a world without government if they shut down? Mm. What, would, what would happen Gosh. to us? Gosh, uh, well, I'd probably <laughs> be, you know, just go right through Downton Abbey, one, one at season one and two. Uh, so many, I, I have a lot of free time on my hands. If they, well, I wrote down a couple of things. I was thinking about this basic premise of like, why don't you, this, why don't you, like, everyone's like, oh, reach out to the people. Here's an idea. Like, do you do party line versus constituents? Or, I don't know what that word is. Con constituents. The, 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 the voters. The voters. Yes. Quisani. Uh, Quisani. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino. You know what I mean? It's like, 
the people don't want this. A guy, wow, here, here's a thought. Why don't you go around and, and ask the people who you represent? But no one, no one cares about that. It's just like, yeah, party line, party line, party line. And the whole, I, I love, I, these words are so funny. The sequestration? Sequestration. Yes. Yeah, all I could think of was sequester and castration. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I could think of. But then I thought, if you sequestered all these people at the threat of castration, we would get things moving in about two hours. We'd have they would a just budget. be like, boom, budget. Absolutely. Done. Kelly, yeah. what do you think? Uh, you know, money, 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 money. It's all about money. There's too much money in politics. And like you said, these people need to get reelected. And the campaign cycle never quits, never stops. So they're always raising money. This is about pleasing the people who really pay for these elections. And the citizens don't get any say in any of this. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and what I really feel this is all about, ultimately, is that the right and the left, I mean, we're heading towards some sort of crazy civil war. I mean, I feel like this is the Mideast. I feel like we now live in the Mideast, and this is the Palestinian and the Israelis, and there's no coming together, there's no talking, there's, there's no compromise. And I'm like, well, let's just, you know, let's get down to it, folks. You know, in a bizarre way, I think the analogy works because it's become like if you give one inch, yes. if you give one There's inch no of land, all you've shown is weakness. Yes. And that's so the antithesis, really, of what politics is. So I think this is going to be the question that every week on this show that I'm going to deal with here is we all talk about this. We all talk about the money and the gridlock and, and the fine people at the Young Turks talk about it all the time. But what can we do besides all saying it. Now you ran for president of the United States for the Republicans. I wasn't allowed to announce that uh, until you were sitting here. Uh, otherwise you don't, weren't going to turn this thing off. Get past security. Uh, what do we do about this really? Besides just saying that's the money all the time. What do we do? What do people do? We got to start getting along. And I fault Obama for that. And I said that in, in my campaign. And I liked Obama, although I was a maxed out Hillary Clinton donor. So I kind of came around reluctantly. But he needs to, to be more of a politician with the Congress. He needs to go reach out to them. Reagan did that right when he was elected. But didn't brought he try Tip that already? In. Didn't he try that his he, first he, uh, term? Not, not, he didn't invite Mitch O'Connell to the White House for 18 months for just a one on one thing. Oh, and then okay. somebody said to me, well, do you know Mitch McConnell? But, Would you ever want to sing need, with Mitch McConnell, really? I mean, you, they, That's what you got to do. That's what that glad handing is. You can take a guy like Duval Patrick, who's the governor of Massachusetts. Yeah. I love who, that man. He is great, and he's a politician who likes people and goes, you know, we've got an intellectual for president. He's a great speaker, but he's not a people person. Yeah. He's not comfortable groveling with all these well, send politicians. Send Joe Biden in. I mean, I feel like all we hear are stories of we're trying, we're trying, we're trying. Obama trying in the first four years. And now it seems like he won this, you know, and everyone's like, you only have now one year in your second term to jam down the entire agenda. So now it just, it just, I think there's a very simple solution that is just to split up the United States. Very easy to do. <laughs> Democrats take the coast, yeah. Republicans take the middle, and we're done. Why is we it? are done. What is it about so. Democrats that they like to live near water? <laughs> Water in big cities. We're very thirsty. Uh, very, yes, very thirsty. Very thirsty. People. Very thirsty because we're help. We're trying to help everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I always think it's maybe because Democrats want an easy escape in case the Republicans really do take over. Get Just their yachts. That's true. Mm -hmm. Get, and get, get their yachts. Yeah. Yes, my yacht is parked yeah. outside. Oh yes, oh yeah. those Democrats with their yachts. All right. <laughs> All right, let's keep talking politics for a little bit. Uh, and as much as I think the gridlock is going to be one of the things we talk about here, uh, this also, uh, the media, which has consistently failed us all the way around, every day. Uh, MSNBC uh, has hired Robert Gibbs, who was uh, President Obama's press secretary, and David Axelrod, who is his chief campaign uh, officer. Uh, and they are now working as analysts on MSNBC. Now, before you jump down my throat, uh, yes, Fox News has hired Sarah Palin in the past and Newt Gingrich, so yes, maybe they're just being as bad as them, but should progressives be a little bit better? That's where I'm going to start this thing. Aaron, what no. do you think? No, load the deck. <laughs> <laughs> load it up. I mean, honest to God, there's no, like, it's so split, everything is so split, and now the media is completely, I watch MSNBC, like, a couple, it would be refreshing now and then if someone's like, what, I remember, uh, like, on Rachel Maddow a couple weeks ago, she was like, what's going on with the drones and that secret report, and I thought, wow, we haven't heard one, like, call Obama out, like, I think maybe in the last, you know, couple of years, so, yeah. I, I mean, 
but but the, also the flip side is like if I want to get you know throw Obama under the bus, you hit Fox. If I want to get this is you know pro Democrat, let's everything's going well, hit MSNBC. And then one time I was like, I'm going to watch the nightly news. I want to see what my parents are are getting. Mm. And it was like you know 20 minutes on a chicken farm in <laughs> Illinois. So I was like, forget it. I'm going to go back to MSNBC. Right. You know what I mean? It really is like you got to pick your. It's like cheerleading. You know yeah. which which yeah, it's ridiculous. Kelly, where does it leave CNN if there if MSNBC is going to go down the route that Fox has gone down, just the other side. Where does that leave that network that people used to trust that now nobody watches? Where are they? Uh, I don't know. I can't stand Wolf Blitzer. The minute he comes on, <laughs> I used to love CNN. I mean, back in the day, they were the ones. They were hiding under the bed in the you know in the Iraq War. Uh, a CNN wants to be this middle ground, but it's just it's mushy. It's it's. It's like a big, mushy, peat moss bog. There's nothing there. Um, the fourth estate, it's gone. It's disappeared. There's, there's no one deciding how to filter this information. There's, I mean, you know, where's Edward R. Murrow? Uh, ever since, you know, I blame, I mean, we've got Reagan who undid a lot of it, you know, with the, uh, uh, the fairness, uh, fairness doctrine went yeah. away. Then Clinton and the Communications Act let all these corporations buy all this media up, the conglomerates. It's all about eyes and it's all about ratings. It's not about information anymore. So you know what, at least the bias is front and center now. Before you used to have to educate people and say, oh, the, new, the, net, the, the nightly news is biased. The New York Times actually is biased. Now it's like, of course it's biased, except people don't think it's biased. People who, liberals watch MSNBC, think that's the truth, and the conservatives watch Fox and think that's the truth, and they're both screwed. Yeah, and I yeah. actually think it's dangerous that we constantly are reinforcing the very things that we believe and never challenging of any of those and thoughts. And then we get gridlock in Washington. And, mm, yeah. Ooh, no, it's, it's I wonder why. Yeah. Sometimes I, I go like three shows in, like Ed Show, <laughs> Rachel Maddow, and then like three shows in, and I'm just like, yeah, come on, yeah, yeah come on. And then I'm just like, all right, I get so riled up. Yes. And then I think, well, there's also an other opinions out there. There's other, and, and the thing is like, yeah, I'm like a you know, pretty intense Democrat, but I know my party's got major issues. Like, I also would like to sit down with a, like a, a normal Republican. I mean, there's only three or four left. <laughs> only because he hasn't and, and spoken have, four minutes. And, and that's have, have, no, oh, but I, I need to learn. I want to be informed. I know there's, like, and that's why it's so sad because there should be a coming together of great ideas on the Republican side and the Democratic side. That's what, how it should work. Work. And that's, that's, we need a three party system. I mean, that's the only thing. I think we absolutely. Or an eight party system. Or an eight party system. Yeah. yeah, or a ten party system. can work and they used to work. And Axe, good for him. He's a political consultant, made good, let him go make some money now and tout his, his uh, administration. And I think it's great, but, but we have lost the objectivity in, mm. in media. And that's sad. And Fox started it, and MSNBC's around to yeah. give that balance. And CNN was there, but now CNN is going to go entertainment. And so you're going to have to go to newspapers or stations or, or networks like RT, Russian television, BBC, that are actually yeah. being very objective. Yeah. And I think Al those Jazeera are going to start. English is amazing. They're, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. going to start being the alternative for what people. What kind of who Republican are you telling us to go to Russian TV and Al Jazeera? <laughs> <laughs> the greatest well, Republican ever. I was interviewed by David Frost on Al Jazeera. So yeah. I'm, a, I'm a loyal follower of that network in there. They're much more impartial than, yeah. than our networks yeah, are here. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, interestingly, you really suffered from this, uh, this partisan and corporate conglomerate news controlled everything because you polled at one point to get into one of the Fox News debates. And everybody was saying the entire election cycle, oh, we need a Republican who's socially moderate and more okay with abortion or gay rights, that kind of stuff, uh, but who's you know fiscally conservative and strong for defense, which was precisely what your platform was. And Fox News was still pushing you on the outside. So that just goes to show how partisan the, the news organization well, yeah, has I think I, my What I speculate is that Romney had something to do with that. I was very much uh, going after Romney, which is why I was on Rachel Maddow a lot, because I pointed out a lot of his shortcomings and a lot of contradictions, and, and Fox left me off. And I think the Romney campaign threatened that he would be not participating in that debate if I was there, because I was in that position to um, point out some of his problems. So that's my suspicion. I don't know if Fox necessarily did it um, of their own accord, but I think that the 
uh, opponents uh, that I was running against might have had something to do with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it looks like Romney's probably going to be a Fox News contributor now, so that sort of brings <laughs> this thing full circle. Okay, let's uh, let's move on. I think we have a bit of uh, good political news because that does happen every now and again. Uh, it looks like DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act, uh, could be on the way out. Obviously, President Obama has done a lot of good stuff when it comes to. Uh, gay marriage and uh, marriage equality, that's what uh, we're told we should call it. Um, but because of the Fifth Amendment, which is equal protection under the law, they're now saying that DOMA's really indefensible and Obama is probably not going to defend it. All adds up. I have a feeling that this panel is pretty much okay with that. I'm super gay and I <laughs> am very excited. Uh, I would like to, you know, be a human and uh, have the right, have ba basic rights. I loved it, I circled this one part for the, for the house brief. It said, gays and lesbians are one of the most influential, best connected, best funded, and best organized interest groups in modern <laughs> politics and have attained more legislative victories, political power, and popular favor in less time than virtually any other group in American history, wow. the House Brief says. And I'm like, yes. Uh, it was still no rights. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if we could just get that moving, uh, that would be fantastic. All of this is like, you know, pomp and circumstance. I'm like, how about, how about also some basic rights? Yeah, wasn't it be. Some, someone last uh, election cycle said the gay, the gay Gay money is the new Hollywood money. Oh. That's what they. Uh, that's what they were saying. What, what do you think about this? We're, it, it's time, right? I mean, is there anything to even debate here? It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous that we are in the 21st century and we are discussing this. Uh, that uh, that uh, it's a basic civil rights issue, and yet. We know, was it Alabama just passed the 13th Amendment yep. last week? Yes. So, just passed it. you know, could be a while still. Yeah, and this won't come out till tomorrow, so it could be flipped again. But uh, yeah, so uh, it's, it, 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 it astounds me that, you know what it is, it's, there's a section of our society, our culture, that this white male established elite that really, really wants to keep it in 1952 wants the country to be there and stay there, and, and that's when they were in charge. And it, things are moving on, and it makes them nervous. And so they're doing everything they can to, to, to slow it down and to, and, to, and to demonize every bit of the population that doesn't stand with them. So it's, um, so true. it is about time, and I just, I just hope, hope it finally, finally happens. Yeah. Now, Fred, I know this is cause is obviously uh, dear and near to your heart, and you've been fighting this thing from the inside, so give us a little sort of the insider steps of how you think this is now going to play out. Well, you know, this goes back to the 70s when we were getting beat up and they were trying to ban gay teachers in California and other states, and we've progressed to, to this unbelievable position where we are now at the United States Supreme Court, thanks to Chad Griffin and a few other tremendous leaders, with a lawsuit on, on two fronts. One, to try and um, overturn Proposition 8, which banned gay marriage in California, yep. And now on DOMA, which is this, was put in and signed by a Democratic president, Bill Clinton is, is completely, you know, now come out and opposed it, is gonna be definitely turned down. As will the Supreme Court, I think, I'm, I'm positive actually, um, overturn Prop 8 and go along with that decision. We just won four states in November, which is unbelievable. And now, for the first time, the argument they used, the opponents used against same-sex marriage was that the public is against it. Well, they're not now. In four states last November, they passed it. So I think that Proposition 8 will rule um, the overturning of Proposition 8, and we will just continue forward. And, and there's cases moving forward which will make marriage equality the law of the land. Yeah. And what a message that sends to younger people who struggle. I had a terrible time growing up gay. Yeah. It was just, I, I had no self-esteem. I was embarrassed. I was. I mean, it, w it was a very difficult road for me, and I had it a lot better than most. And, and kids are suffering today, and we see the suicides, teenage suicides, so we need to make everyone in this country equal. Yeah, I mean, you hit on a lot of points there, but I, I think one of the, the main things is that, what I think what's happened in the last year or two is that we've learned that the arguments against gay marriage are completely insane. You know what I mean? They always say, well, you're gonna destroy traditional marriage. What? I don't think that there's one study that is proven where you've brought in gay people to be allowed to be as regular and boring <laughs> as straight people that suddenly straight marriages yeah. are crumbling or that they said, if you get rid of don't ask, don't tell, the military is gonna suffer. It's been over a year now. I don't think there's been one instance, and I'm, if I'm wrong, please correct it's me, working. that uh, don't ask, don't tell being flipped has done anything. You know, my so, favorite critic of this was the Pope. 
Yeah. Who was not there for long, but he said <laughs> he on done. the eve of the Spanish vote, when they voted to uh, allow same-sex marriage, he said that, that gay marriage was insidious and dangerous. And this yeah. was three years ago in the height of the priest abuse scandal. I'm yeah. thinking, what about that? Yeah. Why doesn't he take on that issue yeah. instead of attacking poor people who are innocent and just want to be happy and, and marry the person that they love? Yeah. And divorce rate is what, like 56%? Like they're doing it so yeah. well, so I can't, <laughs> like what is, yeah. what is, doing well. it's, it's completely, it's completely insane. Yeah. I have to say though, so on a positive note, I do so much traveling for stand up. I mean, to like parts of the country where you're like, oh God, how's this gonna go? No one blinks, no one has a problem with it. When I start talking about politics, there's a problem. But the, <laughs> when, when I literally talk about like gay marriage and, and I start my like gay marriage joke, it's like people are clapping, like in rural counties, like across the country. So it's been super positive. And I think, and the Supreme Court historically has never really taken on such big social issues unless, until like the tide has turned. Mm -hmm. They did that with, uh, you know, interracial marriage. And so. I don't know, it seems yeah. really positive, which That's is That's funny because yeah. we think that, you know, Supreme Court justices are there for life so that they can make brave choices, but as you said, yeah. they always wait until wait. it's a past <laughs> yeah. the tipping point, yeah. and then they're like, oh, we, we did this. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> all right, but that is all good news, so uh, we're happy about that. All right, we got one more story for you this week, uh, and I think it's a fitting way to end all this. We are getting dumber uh, <laughs> as a nation and a world. Uh, humans are getting dumber, and there is a plethora of reasons, but of course mostly it's because of the things that we put in our bodies, and I'm gonna read a couple of them to you. Uh, fluoride in the water supply is uh, hampering children's neurodevelopment, that's one of them. Uh, pesticides are now linked to lower intelligence levels and decreased cognitive function, which could explain uh, most of my friends. And, <laughs> And processed fruit, processed fruits, which I'm sure are coming. Uh, processed foods, specifically high fructose corns. Is it fructose or fructose? I, I had a debate. Fructose. It's fructose. I it is. I, I, I've been having a lot of that, so I'm not quite sure. Yeah, for it. Yeah, uh, high fructose <laughs> corn syrup or fructose has been reduced, uh, linked to a reduced IQ. I just had a Coke before we started, and I think that was complete evidence <laughs> you need the of it. Mexican that was Coke that has the real sugar in it. Oh, mamma mia! Okay, so I proved it right there. But are we getting dumber, Fred? Are we getting dumber? What was the question? I, <laughs> no, I, I think that's BS. Um, one of my favorite quotes is I think Mark Twain really made it up, but he said the the three biggest lies are lies. Big lies and statistics. And <laughs> as soon as the Almond Board Association, all the almond growers came out and said that almonds have been proven to decrease cancer risk and everybody's going out and buying almonds, I'm always suspect. As a political consultant, we did a lot of polling, a lot of studies, and the ones that didn't quite turn out the way we wanted, we wouldn't necessarily release. And I think that's what we're seeing here. I think this is, I don't know who, if it's the National Resources Defense Fund, or I don't know who are behind these things, but a lot of people, there's, if you really dig deep, you will see that there is a selfish interest in these studies. A Republican who doesn't believe in scientific <laughs> fact, I'm shocked. <laughs> Kelly, what do you think? I, I, I'm, I don't, I'm kind of torn on this one because you know, I, look out, I, look out at, I look out at the world and I think, Yes, we're definitely getting dumber. Yes. Uh, it, it's, it's getting crazy out there. Uh, but then again, I think about all of the ways in which we are overwhelmed these days. I mean, I feel overwhelmed by everything and I feel <laughs> dumber, but then I think it's also middle age and hormones, but I don't know. <laughs> um, that but That's not in my notes here, but I'll But, I'll but you know what, here, the general curve of civilization, if you think like from the, you know, the pyramids to now, you know, generally, I, th I think we're on the uptick a little bit. Maybe yeah. not a lot, but I think it's a general uptick. I think humans, are, you know, we have a lot of challenges, but you know, hey, we went to the moon and someone invented Twitter. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. These feel like smart things to me. Aaron, dumber, smarter, what's up? Well, I think part of it is that that page where the article was on also, there was 79 things on the page and it's like, did you like the article? Tweet about it, Facebook about it. Did you agree with that? Google Plus, add your friends. And I was just like, uh, uh. So I think that is in fact part of it. it. There's just so much going on that you're just like, you know, 
I, I, I also sort of agree that if you're, uh, you know, uh, pounding Fritos and Coke and you're, you know, 900 pounds and you're uh, 10, uh, you're not going to pick up a book. You'd be less <laughs> likely maybe to take a nap than to read. So I think that is, in fact, We're a factor. <laughs> but I also, in all fairness, I think I don't see us really like in a, such a horrible decline. The article said that he would bet like a average citizen from Athens would yeah. be more, you know, you know, smarter and well, I'm like, all right, well, come on. You know, if we were running around in like sheets and sandals and nothing else to do, you know, we'd be reading more, but there's, uh, we got a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, it was just orgies and reading for and those right. people, well, wasn't it? And yeah. weren't there like gods in a sky on a mountain somewhere? Yeah. There was a lot of- And wasn't oh, it like an yeah. oracle? They like go to people who were psychic and like yeah. read like, I mean, hello. That this hasn't is, changed. Yes, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, a Carlin giving a shot to religion, oh, I don't sorry. believe it. <laughs> come on here. now. <laughs> well, you guys have given me a little hope here, I think with this story. I thought all three of you we're going to say, yes, we're getting dumber. I've been dealing with dumb people every day. And uh, well, you guys. Well, that, that is true. Uh, that is true. There's a, there's, a, there's a little bit of truth that well, we are. Well, isn't it always dumber. like, you know, well, those people are the dumb <laughs> yeah. We are the smart people. We're on the panel. Yeah. And you just moved yeah. from New York. So does this LA thing. Is that well, I got to tell you, my vitamin D are levels dumber? are peaking right now. <laughs> and I do feel, despite the intro to this segment, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just a little smarter than, uh, than I used to. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> I want to thank you guys for watching Room Report. Oh, by the way, our official outfitter, my clothes, my shirt, oh. my pants, my shoes, brought to you by bonobos.com, and you can enter code Ruben Report for 20% off your first order. I want to thank Aaron Foley, Fred Carger, Kelly Carlin, and now I'm going to let you guys pimp yourselves out, you geniuses. <laughs> Tell me about yourselves. Go. Uh, well, I enjoy a good flannel now and then, so I'm going to log on and give myself a discount. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I really gave it up. Uh, I, well, my website's AaronKFoley.com. You can log on, tour dates, uh, doing a lot of stuff in LA, and then Austin, Columbus, Ohio, Boston, all kinds of fun stuff on the road. So lots of stand up. Excellent. Come to a show. Fred. Uh, FredCarger.com, of course, and um, I'm. Uh, trying to get a job, actually, as a TV <laughs> pundit. So uh, if you're watching out there from any of the networks, this is Hire him. what I want to do. But um, I'm going to continue my activism boycotting Amway, which is very homophobic, and I'm going to be a thorn in their side. I think that was the first time ever in the history of internet or television that anyone was asked to pimp themselves out and actually asked for a job. <laughs> <laughs> That was really Call quite amazing. Spade spade. Tell us about yourselves. I need help. <laughs> I have no money. Please. Kelly uh, Carlin. And gee, strangely enough, I have a website, <laughs> kellycarlin.com. And, uh, but I'm gonna do my show, A Carlin Home Companion, March 23rd at the Acme Theater here in Hollywood. And you can find me weekly on Smodcast at Waking from the American Dream, my podcast where I talk to all sorts of people about all sorts of things. All right, and I'm Dave Rubin, and if you're watching this, then you found me already, so we're good to go. I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week.